Okay, so we have our main power sensors connected up. The next step is going to be getting the unit itself power. So these sensors don't actually provide power. They're just uh, inductors. So they read the magnetic field and electric field. Uh, I think they read the magnetic field caused by the electric field going through these main power wires. So we have to hook this unit up to the bottom of our sensor, our, our main unit, and then we're going to provide it power. So we have four wires with this unit. We have white, which will be our neutral. Red and black, we traditionally see as our hot wires, and then they also have a blue. The blue, I think, is for if you've got three-phase power. Again, we don't have three-phase, so we're only going to use red, black, and white. It's kind of nice. This thing, this unit comes with connectors. So you can unsnap this. This side is going to be what goes in the bottom of our receiving unit. And you can see this is a bit of a, uh, an issue. Like this, the way they have this unit advertised, it just sits flat on this bottom surface, but there's no way this thing's sitting flat with the power port down there. So it's not gonna look quite as clean as they show uh, on the installation, unless there's a better way to do that. Uh, we'll see if there is a better way, let me know in the comments and I'd like to get this unit sitting flat, so. So the way that they want us to wire this power, like I said, we've got four wires. We've got white, which is our natural neutral. neutral. We've got black, which is one of our 120 volt lines, red, which is our other 120 volt, and blue would be our third. But since we're not using blue, we don't have three phase power, the blue is also gonna go on the neutral bus bar. And so, because they don't have two empty breakers that are going next to each other, these are gonna get pigtailed into existing breakers. It's really important that these go into 15 amp breakers because the jumpers that they gave us are only rated for 15 amps. So what I'm gonna pick, you can see I've got a 20, a 20, a 20 up at the top. I've got a 50 for my stove, uh, a 30, another 30, 30, but everything else in my panel is 15. Oh, I got one more 20 down here for the garage. So I'm gonna pick these two breakers here because I don't wanna go on the GFI. The GFI is also 20 amp. Um, so I'm gonna go on these two breakers and it's really important that they be right on top of each other or uh, an even number of spaces away because the way that this works is I've got two rails, right? 120 volts here, 120 volts here. So this is on uh, line phase A, phase B, phase A, phase B, phase A, phase B. The way that they clip into the bus bars in the back is gonna be alternating back and forth uh, for phase A and phase B. So we'll take this, we'll wire these two into our neutral, we'll pigtail these two off of our bottom two breakers, and then connect it back up to this unit and we should be good to go as far as power goes. So to make our connection up here, just take a flat head, loosen up on our ground and neutral bar. Maybe twist the two of these together, make it like one big wire. So then you don't have a bunch of ends going off. And push that in there, tighten back down. So technically, I think by code, you're only supposed to have one wire per hole in this ground neutral bar. My house was built a long time ago, late 70s, early 80s. And as you can see along here, I have a bunch of neutral and grounds connected to the same spot. They all are kind of snugged up. I don't think I'd have enough spots on this uh, neutral ground bar uh, to do it. This was probably code back when this place was built, um, but is not currently. Uh, so keep that in mind. I probably should be getting a new grounding neutral bar, but uh, that's not this, we're not doing that kind of install. If you had a professional electrician, they might have a, more of a problem with it. Um, and require you to get everything up to snuff. So we've got our two hot wires here. And again, check your top breaker. Uh, it, like mine, sometimes when you're working on this, you'll flip it back on and off like I did. Uh, and so double check that to make sure that this is in the down and off position before you start playing with these breakers. Otherwise you can get zapped. So to get these breakers out, it's pretty easy. Uh, most style breakers work like this. You're just gonna take and tip it away. And then you're gonna be able to pull this back out. You can see for mine, there's a flathead screw connection here. So I'm just gonna loosen this and that wire will come out. So what I'm gonna do is take one of my pigtail wires and slip it in here. Uh, this again is an older style breaker. The way they have these wired up is between this screw terminal and the flat plate on the bottom. So we'll just 
squeeze that in nice and good, give it a tug test, make sure that it's not coming out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna need to make, take one of our wire nuts and make three connections. So we've got our pigtail here, we've got our wire that's gonna go to our lights, and we've got one of our phases. So pull the insulation off. Take all three of these and line them up. And then just twist, oh, dropped it. Twist your wire nut down uh, over the top and that will cinch everything together. Some people like to twist them. I personally don't um, because the wire nut itself is gonna twist them together. And I don't have a ton of stripped insulation nor a ton of extra wire to work with here. So I don't want to have, you can see it might take a little bit of wrangling to get three wires together at once. And then you just twist that until you can't twist it anymore. Give it a little tug test for each of your wires. And then you're good to go. So to put this back in, we're going to reorient it this. You can see it's got a curved clip here. So that goes in first to your rail, and then you just snap it back down. We'll do the same thing with the second breaker. Tip it back to pop it off. Pull it out, loosen the connection. Attach our pigtail. Now we're gonna take our red wire, remove the insulation. Wire nut, hot wire. I am just going to wrap the red wire around a little bit because it's stranded. That will hopefully help keep everything from coming off. And you want to wrap it, if you do, in the same direction that you're going to be twisting this down so it pulls everything tighter. All right, wrapped in. Hook the breaker around the rail, click it till it's back in place, and then try and tuck these away neatly in your box. We've got our plastic connector. And it is indeed directional, so it can only snap in one direction. Snap that back together. And try and be as neat as possible with those wires in there. So now for the fun part, we've got our sensors. If we open this box up, you can see we've got eight of these 50 amp sensors in here. I'll pull one out. Same thing as the main breakers, they are directional. So same as the main one, we've got K to L, but this time the breaker is going to be K, your source, and L is gonna to point towards the circuit in your house, the load in your house. So we'll go ahead and snap those in place. I'll start with my stove. Um, when we do have a situation like this where we have a two pole breaker, you only put one sensor on that two pole breaker. And now we'll just do the same thing. We're gonna go down through our lines Again, a uh, single sensor per dual pole breaker. We'll go straight down through the rest. I'm gonna skip this dual pole for now because this is my AC. And I'm also gonna skip this dual pole because this is my water heater. So I'll go down to my last breaker on this side. All right, so I've got them all connected. Um, that shows you one potential downside that I didn't think about this, is it's incredibly crowded over here in my panel. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna get all these wires down here. I'm sure I'll manage, but it's gonna be a little tricky. Um, that is one thing that you wouldn't have to deal with if you had a Sense. Sense obviously just has these two main clamps, and I think they do have systems with a couple circuits, but yeah, you won't have to deal with managing all these cables. So we'll come back in a second once I've got all this managed, and we'll go from there. Hey everybody, I'm back. So I was able to fit everything in there. As you can see, it is uh, a bit of a mess with all the wires and everything. Um, so in the meantime, I've actually gone ahead and set up the app and I learned something that is good to know ahead of time. So when you wire this up, I got in the mode of just clicking the, the breaker, click, clicking the sensors on the breakers and just getting them all set up and everything ready to go. And I wasn't really paying attention to what slot everything went in. So then when it came time to set up the app and tell it what each circuit did, that was a bit of a mess. So I'd recommend making a list 
of your breaker number and the sensor number that you connect it to. On the back of this unit, I'll show you a picture. On the back of this unit, there's numbers for the breakers and it actually goes opposite to the direction you'd think it would be. So in your breaker panel, you start one on this side. And for this unit, it starts one on this side. So if the unit were turned around, uh, it would make more sense lining up with what you got there. But just make a list of that ahead of time. Um, I used Google Drive because then I can keep that in an, a spreadsheet and I'll always have that for all the circuits in my house and I can kind of label which outlets go to where as I find them. Um, and then that'll be just a nice thing to have. I lose any piece of paper that I make. So if I can keep it electronically, it makes it a lot easier for me. Uh, whatever works for you, make sure you write that down ahead of time. Um, yeah. And the, the setup and everything of the app wasn't that bad. I'll try and do a video of that as well. One thing that's kind of cool is once you get all this hooked up, you start seeing what uses what kind of energy. And there was something that actually surprised me that used the most energy in my house. Um, so I've got a, an electric dryer. I've got a heat pump water heater. And I've got an electric stove. And those kind of were the three things on the top of my mind that would have used the most electricity in my house. But there was actually something that used even more uh, that really surprised me. So stay tuned, I'll try and do a video on that and show you, uh, yeah, what ended up using the most energy. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to click like, and if you like this video and you wanna see more and see those other things as they come up, subscribe. Thanks a lot. Until next time.